about the transition from the paradigm of um, audiolingual method uh, towards uh, communicative language teaching. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the basic principles of communicative language teaching. Um, audiolingual method, as we've seen, is based upon a theory of uh, language learning, which is based on behaviorism, and a theory of language, which is structuralism. That is the belief that language uh, consists of a hierarchy of particular parts that fit together into a larger structure. In the 1950s, that particular uh, paradigm, those particular basic beliefs of behaviorism and structuralism, uh, was attacked by um, Chomsky. Um, and he made the particular distinction between surface structure and deep structure. If structuralism was based upon parts joining together, uh, phonemes creating morphemes, creating uh, words, creating sentences, then um, the surface structure uh, of a sentence like Jane is eager to please and Jane is easy to please uh, should be the same. But what he showed was that there's a deeper underlying um, structure to, to these sentence, sentences once they have been transformed. So, for example, in the deep structure, we can say pleasing Jane is easy, but we can't say pleasing Jane is eager, which is kind of nonsense. So on the surface, they appear to the same, be, be, appear to be the same, but there's things going on underneath. Uh, and this is why Chomsky appeals to a more cognitive approach to language learning and the notion of generative linguistics and the distinction between competence and performance. Competence is our unconscious knowledge of the grammar of the language and in particular situations, spontaneous talk or when we're stressed or tired, uh, our performance of what we know to be correct may deteriorate, so we make mistakes when we speak. So um, performance is very much what, what we hear, what we write, uh, and competence is the underlying knowledge we have, cognitive knowledge of the grammar of the language. This particular notion of competence and performance was attacked by um, writers, especially um, Del Himes, who introduced the notion of communicative competence, um, which was articulated further by many writers. Um, one amongst, uh, two amongst was Canali and Swain's particular model of grammatical, sociolinguistic discourse and strategic competence. And we've uh, looked at that distinction before. Basically, grammatical corresponds to the notion of competence. Um, sociolinguistic, our ability to use appropriate language in social relationships based upon roles and relationships. Uh, discourse is the structure of particular texts spoken or are written and strategic, our ability to use particular strategies like being able to ask for clarification, be able to, being able to negotiate meaning, being able to use uh, circumlocutions to describe a word when we don't know the word itself. Um, so the basis of communicative language teaching then is the notion of communicative competence, which is a very broad and wide description of what language is and what language does. Um, we can um, distinguish two particular threads of the notion of communic communicative competence. One that looks basically more at the linguistic side or gram uh, grammatical side, and one that looks more at the level of communication are in terms of negotiation of meaning. So if we follow that thread down, then we're moving towards the notion of tasks in the classroom, and the tasks are the communicative practice, and we're more concerned with the content of that task, and also, uh, to borrow Krashen's little formula, 
we're looking at um, comprehensible input that's just a little bit above the particular competence of the, the learner. And that feeds into what has been described in many ways, in different ways, a psychological approach, a P approach. Uh, Widdison calls it language for communication, and it's often called a strong version of communica communicative language teaching. And in a strong version, the emphasis tends to be more on creating communicative activities than focusing on the particular language itself. On the other side, uh, if we look at those thread that comes from communicative competence, we can see a focus on form and a focus on function. Um, and the function feeds into a different notion of a syllabus, um, and one based more on needs analysis and outcomes. So the Council of Europe uh, in the 60s was one of the first organizations to begin to describe a syllabus in terms of functional and notional terms rather than in structural, grammatical terms. So notional refers to these larger units such as time, uh, weather, um, larger particular notions which define language use. And all of those approaches, form and function, can be described as a linguistic approach or an in Wittison's term, language as communication, and is often described as a, a, a weak form of communicative language teaching. Okay, <clears throat> let's look specifically now at communicative language teaching and its two particular threads, and we'll go into that in a little bit more detail. So, if we look at the <clears throat> Uh, the, the weak form of um, uh, communicative language teaching, as I said, it has a, a greater emphasis on the linguistic elements of communication, and we can just break those up into form and function. As we've talked, um, function can be described in a notional functional sense or in a genre sense, and that's very much based upon needs analysis, and this is a thread that... Um, feeds into specific types of Englishes, so ESP, English for specific purposes, EAP, English for academic purposes, a VESL, Vessel, um, Vocational English in a Second Language, and SBI, um, Strategies Based Instruction. So all those look very much at the, uh, the notional functional genre aspects of what the language is doing. The function. Uh, if we look at the form, um, then we can look at two main trends here. Uh, a, a more open and creative use of uh, form, um, which feeds into the approach called focus on form. And this is particularly based upon Long's notion of the interaction hypothesis and through the negotiation of meaning um, second language acquisition is facilitated. Um, the other element of form, which is more folk closed and formulaic, tends to um, uh, draw its strength from the emergence of corpus linguistics and the uh, 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 looking at lexis, frequency of lexis, salience, and also the notion of collocation. So that's all part of a kind of a linguistic approach to uh, CLT. Um, we need to keep the two in balance. It tends to be that the strong version of communicative language teaching has tended to be favored. And what has been lacking is this focus on the particular language you need to be able to achieve the particular communicative task. So if we look on the strong side, uh, we call this a psychological or, or pedagogical um, approach to uh, language teaching language for communication, the emphasis is really on communication. And we can look at several different particular methods that can be understood as being part of this uh, uh, larger communicative approach. So the notion of comprehensible input in the uh, natural approach, or total physical response, can be seen as one way of providing communication in the classroom cooperative and discovery learning 
based upon collaboration is another way of creating communication in the classroom. Perhaps the most dominant paradigm in terms of communication has been task-based instruction, where the units of the class has been seen as tasks to be achieved, usually in pair and group work. We can also think of it in terms of the influence of um, humanistic and constructivist theories in terms of the way that communication is best fostered when there's some kind of personalization, where students are able to draw on their own experiences uh, when talking and doing tasks in the classroom. Um, going a little bit further beyond and following the impetus of of communication. We can think of particular methods like service learning where students go out into the community, maybe they're placed in a school, maybe they're placed in um, uh, a disabled person's, um, um, handicapped person's workshop or in a nursing home and the, those situations create the need for communication. And another particular approach to communication is content-based instruction where we focus on actually teaching a particular content and that becomes important and at the same time we try and use that as a way of feeding in the language that's required to study that particular content. So again we have these two strands the linguistic and the psychological or uh, pedagogical one that stresses communication and the need to create communication, and then the other one stressing the particular language that's used in particular uh, genres and functions. Um, and both of these two strand, strands are extremely important, and it's very difficult to keep both of them going at the same time. But that, ultimately, is what we need to be doing in a communicative language teaching classroom.